Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KeepBadger.com here to talk about one, what security contractors are actually do, and two, how to get into it. We'll start by taking a step back. Is it semantics? I don't know. So there's confusion. Hey, security contractor, mercenary, paramilitary company, blah, blah, blah. What is it? Well, what I will speak to is security contracting. There aren't really mercenaries anymore, at least not according to any of the companies that actually abide by the Geneva Convention. And wherein lies the difference? Well, as a security contractor, you're there expressly to protect someone or maybe something, some sort of asset. Conversely, so keep in mind, protecting, i.e., completely defensive role. On the flip side of that, you have a mercenary, which like they're there to go fight a war, completely offensive, no defense, like not to say they wouldn't have some sort of defensive action, but they're hired to go aggressively on the offense, go fight a war, two different things. I'm sure some people will be like, hey, but whatever, dude, not gonna argue it. Two different things. So with security contracting, one, let's take a quick look at contracts. Like how do those work? How do they come about? Contracts are ultimately created by like a company, maybe a government agency, whatever it may be. So everyone's like, well, why does the military just protect whatever people are over there and stuff like that? Not their role not what they do so what you have is you have all these different companies servicing different ultimately contracts so by way of example you might have a company that they're they're basically business what they got hired to do go over to Afghanistan for this example go rebuild roads maybe go rebuild a bridge maybe build a power plant Ugh. Oh, that one is tough but Whatever it is, they go over there to go do something. Well, lots of times the military can't or won't provide security. Again, not within, like that's not their job. They have other things to do. Or for that matter, maybe it's a governmental agency, whether it's, I don't know, you name it. Pretty much, ugh, not breaking that, pretty much any different agency that happens to be over there most of them don't have the internal structure to actually provide security for themselves lots of them don't usually work in like essentially war zones or if they do usually prior to 9 11 it was very limited kind of threat level where they were at so they actually had internal components to provide security for themselves but now there's a lot of war, so a lot of those agencies don't have internal components. So what will happen is, again, you have some random company that gets hired to go over to Afghanistan, go rebuild some roads or something like that, or you have a government agency that happens to be working over in Afghanistan, and they lack the ability to provide security for themselves, whether it's static security, i.e. guarding the facility where they all live, and work out of or mobile security to the end of actually securing personnel on the move say if they need to go meet someone in town some sort of business meeting maybe they need to actually go out and do construction out at some job site mobile static whatever it may be so the government says hey we need a bridge built all these companies bid one of them wins and they either can or cannot provide security for themselves. So maybe another contract comes out. Hey, we need people to go provide security for this company that's building a bridge. Again, more or less same thing as far as with uh, like governmental agencies. They just lack the infrastructure to actually provide security for themselves in that hostile environment. So at this point, you're like, yes, yeah, sweet. I'm in, let's do this thing. Yeah, maybe not. So 
contracts, when they come out, they ultimately have basically a statement of work oftentimes. And what that says is, hey, we're looking for these requirements, X, Y, Z. Just like in a job, you'll have people like, hey, you need your degree in whatever the hell it is for whatever job you're trying to get. Same thing with contracts. And honestly, what it usually comes down to is, well, I take that back. Completely scales dependent on one, the contract, i.e. the client, because you might have some client that's like, I don't care, I just need some warm bodies. So they'll end up with just some warm bodies, like probably horribly trained, like not vetted, whatever it may be. So you end up with a statement of work that basically dictates what the criteria is that needs to be met in order to actually work on that contract. So you're like, I'm still in, what's the requirements? Well, again, it depends. I'm gonna put on these. These are pretty much my Yule logs. We'll see how long they burn for. So I guess for example, one of the contracts I was on, the statement of work said you needed to have like X amount of years special operations, X amount of years like combat tours in a combat zone, all these different things. And you can basically make the statement of work say pretty much whatever your company wants it to say. And I will say, the better the contracts, usually the more difficult to get into, i.e. the more, the more detailed, the more restrictive statement of works. But here's the thing, contracts I were on was for basically OGA, other governmental agency, with that, like most things in the government, they can waive stuff. Be like, oh, you don't mean the statement of work? We can waive that. Certain things they can, other things they absolutely will not, but it really depends. One of the things that if it's in the contract, it is not gonna be waived, military experience. Not gonna get waived. So you're like, oh, well, went out back and I was practicing with my rifle, damn. Like I was practicing, I'm really good. Did these ninja rolls. Nobody cares, man. Like if it says six years of special forces experience or special operations rather, then it means pretty much at least four years of military experience. And so like the contract I was on, it was pretty much all, granted one of the contracts I'll speak to, it was a, uh, it was static security, it wasn't anything ninja, and everyone there was Ranger Battalion, Infantry, Marine Corps Infantry, maybe maybe some recon guys, like all sorts of stuff. There were some old SEALs on the contract. One dude, he was like a plank holder for SEAL Team 6. Bob. Dude, whatever. <laughs> Probably a good guy, maybe a long time ago. Not the best dude on contract. But anyway, you have all these different people. Some people were like canine handlers and stuff. And keep in mind when we're talking about contracts, what I'm speaking to specifically is security contracts. You can get into all kinds of contracting as far as I'm gonna go be a cook overseas and make some money. Like, yeah, go be a cook, go be a generator mechanic. Like, Whatever it is, if you had a job in the military, there's probably an analog to that contract. I'm not saying you should, like you make up your own mind, man. But there is those jobs over there. Everything I'm speaking to directly though is basically with respect to actual security contracting, i.e. carrying the gun over there, providing security, whether it's static security or mobile security. Depending on the contract, sometimes you can actually get on contract with law enforcement experience. Again, usually they don't want like a beat cop. They want someone who was 
like drug interdiction task force. Actually, I take that back. Stuff more along the lines of like SWAT or something along those lines. Some sort of special response team, things along those lines. And for all you people that are like, hey, I went to a carbine class. I'm ready. Let's do this. I don't want to go in the military. Okay. You're not going to be on probably a worthwhile contract. And one, it'll probably be exorbitantly dangerous, like far outpacing the danger of other contracts because no, uh -uh. and the other side is it's like, well, why do I need to go spend time in the military before I can contract? It's like having a college degree as a requirement for a job. You come out of college, you probably don't really know how to actually do whatever it is you're supposed to do. You'll probably get some OJT, but there is a fundamental understanding of whatever the subject is. To that end, you have people from all branches. We had guys from Coast Guard and stuff like that on contract. And there is a fundamental understanding of like how to operate in a military type unit, like all those little things. And it's all these random little nuanced things that I couldn't even go into because half of them I don't even remember because they're subconscious. And it's just when you get people from the military together, it's usually pretty easy for them to operate versus the dude out on his back 40 and it was like, yeah, man, like I was shooting all these cans. I'm really fast. I'm pretty good with a pistol too. Like, okay, cool. Like, how do you work with other people? Like, nobody cares about that, man. It comes down to, do you have at least these base fundamental requisite skills? And then past that, for whatever the contract is, you still need to go basically get hired. So you get vetted. And some of the contracts, the vetting might be not much. Others, it's like, hey, like draw from the concealed two shots with a pistol to the A box at like 25 yards four second part time and you get two chances like up oh, drop shot you're out thanks for coming out so some of them are really steep like the actual vetting that you need to do to get on contract but I mean consequently you pass a certain level of vetting you know that you passed it whether it's even the physical portion like three quarter one of the contracts three quarter mile run like 180 pound dummy, 50 or 100 yard drag, and then another three quarter mile run back, I don't know, 12 minute time cap, something like that. It's one of those where you know, at least on a fundamental level, the person to your left and right pass those rather than, oh yeah, like I saw that ad in the like penny saver, so here I am. And you're like, oh, awesome. Glad you have my back, man. So the experience, it does matter depending on the contract. And if you're dead set on, hey, I wanna go contract, go spend some time in the military, preferably in some special operations capacity, and that will increase the likelihood of you actually getting on contract. Keep in mind, you've been at war for almost two decades now. There's been a lot of people that have been through the military and all the different combat MOSs. And there's been a lot of people that have came out from years and years in the special operations community. So when you're like, well, I'm really good at Call of Duty, like you should hire me. Why? There's a huge pool of people with a lot of legitimate skills and experience that are going to get hired in front of you. Like that's, that's the way it is, man this point you're like okay whatever i just want to get hired i want to go over there i want to be a security contractor i would evaluate the why like why do you want to be a security contractor but real quick let's touch on what the job is it's boring you're basically a mall cop like cool you get to wear a plate carrier you get some ar all right but i mean ultimately 
all you are is an insurance policy. Like hopefully nothing ever happens. And if something does happen and everyone comes out the other side, like cool high fives all around. If something does happen and it goes sideways, what happens then? Like maybe you don't come back. There's no respawn points in real life. Sorry to break here, like ruin your world picture. To that end, depending on who you're working for can be a huge liability. So you get in some gunfight overseas, whether like it's legitimate or not, you get in a gunfight in another country, what's gonna happen? Are you there on like, are you even there on a stamped passport or are you there with some shady company? Do you have guns that were actually brought into the country legally? Or is it just one huge like ITAR violation? Like that stuff matters. And when you find these contracts, the ones you're gonna get on without any military experience, they're gonna be shady, man. They're gonna be super shady. And yeah, like that's not good. You're gonna end up in some random African country without a stamp in your passport with guns from who knows what, like the local economy, like that stuff's bad. I almost got on a contract. I forget the name of the company. It was some subsidiary, like three times removed from Blackwater, I wanna say. And it was like low pro, thin skin vehicle driving around Iraq with like an AK probably got off the local market, basically providing security for this dude picking up the ballots during the election. It was like, nah, sounds kind of dangerous, no thanks. But I mean, those contracts are out there and you're like, oh, that would be cool. Like, no, no, it's not cool, man. Like, what, so you can maybe tell the story or not, because you died? I don't know, I think pretty hard about that stuff. But with respect to actually getting hired, how do you go about it? As far as myself getting on contract, I'll tell you straight up, networking, knowing people. One of my buddies who I was in the Marine Corps with, we were in the infantry together. He ended up in, I got out, he ended up going over to recon. He was with the uh, whole generation kill, Tony Aspera, super cool dude. And he was like, hey, do you wanna, do you wanna contract? I was like, cool, sounds good, let's do this. He ended up throwing my resume basically on top of the pile because he was already working for the company. Mind you, he was doing some mobile stuff and I ended up doing some static stuff. But uh, really it was a way for me to get into it and then depending on what you're doing, you can actually move. So if you come in on a certain contract, especially depending on the client you're actually working for, you can ultimately prove yourself and be like, okay, like you maybe don't necessarily meet the statement of work for this right here, but we've seen that you've proven yourself. Again, you can't get away from military service if it says military service. But that's really what it came down to for me. Like having someone to throw my resume up on the top of the pile. But here's the other side of it good contracts, contracts that pay well, require a security clearance. So my security clearance, they basically said, okay, like, cool, we're gonna put you in for a security clearance. Took, I don't know, solid like year, year and a half, came back, TSSCI clearance, top secret, secure, compartmentalized information, whatever it is. TSSCI, got read into all sorts of stuff, I don't even remember it. I'm not being vague because I'm trying to be like, oh, this. Like the reason I'm not talking about a bunch of these contracts is because I signed, I don't know how many NDAs. Like, and I don't even remember like w what was in the NDA other than it's like, hey, don't talk about this, this. Pretty much don't talk about everything. So I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. Consequently, not in the habit of talking about the specifics of the contracts I was on because of all these NDAs. But how I got into it was, again, my buddy throwing my name in the pot. If you're like, I really wanna do this, it's gonna be awesome. Well, 
one, you can find companies out there. Again, might not want to be working for them. It'll be, they'll be super cheap, i.e. the daily rate will be terrible. And what they'll do, because the company wants to make money, so they'll stack it with like third country national. So they'll have like a American, maybe being you, and then the rest will be like Ugandans or something like that. And they're paying, I don't know, like 50 bucks a day or something like that. So you want to be on a better contract. Those better contracts have higher requirements and usually all the ones worth being on require usually a top secret clearance, if not TSSCI. So if you're coming out of the military and you have that, that's huge because that's something a company doesn't have to do. If you don't have that, it's definitely a hurdle to some of the better contracts. So if you want to get into it, start getting your resume out there. So who do you apply to? Apply to everyone. If you go on most of the company's websites, they'll have like, hey, apply here. I mean, granted, your resume is going to go in a big pile with everyone else, but whether it's BW, Academy Z, I think it's Academy right now, Triple Canopy, I know SOC has some good contracts, at least they did. They held one of the contracts I was on, one or two of them actually. I know they have some. Uh, other companies, those are kind of the big ones, man. In the last video, I mentioned OH, Osin Hunter. I didn't, I didn't mention it by name because who cares? Most people don't know it's not a household name. Again, without meeting the statement of work, not gonna get hired, but really it's about applying. And if you're like, hey, I don't have that experience, I still want to contract, like, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, none of the name companies are probably gonna hire you. If you have, again, one of those important things, like a TSSCI clearance, that's huge. That right there says, okay, like you are now qualified for all of these things. And again, the only way you're probably gonna end up with that is time in the military. So if you wanna get hired as a contractor, security contractor, shortest path is probably the military. If you're already coming out of the military, just start dropping your resume, man. Start dropping your resume, start calling them up, be like, hey, trying to get in touch with someone I sent in my resume I was wondering are you guys hiring for anything keep in mind there's a huge huge backlog of all these veterans with all kinds of legitimate experience like years of experience all these combat deployments all this stuff and that's who you're going up against like there's there's a glut but if you try you might end up getting something Probably one of the better things is if you have friends, friends of friends that have ties into contracting, yeah, like they can throw your name. I don't know who's gonna do that. Like if you reached out to me, I'm sorry man, like I don't know, you know, I'm not gonna put my name on your name. So if you have a good friend who happens to be contracting, like that might be a legitimate in, but it really comes down to, yeah, getting your resume to the top of the pile, and hopefully your resume, you're not like a paper hero. They hire you because looks like you're a ninja, and then you show up and you're just like grossly out of shape, can't shoot the qual, whatever it is. So you're a liability to everyone else at that point. Don't do that. A lot of people have this romanticized view of contracting you're not kicking in doors. You're not like going on these special missions. Either static, basically a mall cop, like sitting at post somewhere, like watching things in front of you, or you're mobile, which you're pretty much a taxi driver. Sorry, it's one of those two things. Like that's what security contracting is. Like, can things go sideways and get crazy? Absolutely. And if they do, like, it's not a good day, man. Something bad's gonna happen to someone, hopefully not you or the buddies next to you, but it is what it is. Hopefully on some level this has been helpful, even if for no other reason than be like, oh, well I guess 
I guess I'll put that to bed because I'm probably not going to end up security contracting. If you really want to do it, like go out there, go after it. But yeah, be aware of, I guess, what security contracting is and kind of how contracts come about. And yeah, at the end of the day, getting someone to hand your resume is the best. Other than that, just start applying. Again, the top companies are gonna want some legitimate skills that you to bring to the table. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.